Now let's shift our attention to DNS. I'll quickly give you a walkthrough of DNS. DNS stands for Domain Name System. It operates on the principle of a client server model. DNS server provides a name resolution to network endpoints. What that means is DNS translates a host name or a URL, which stands for Uniform Resource Locator, to a corresponding IP address. So in other words, the whole reason DNS was designed was as human beings, we're good with remembering names rather than an IP address. For example, instead of going to www.google.com, if you were to type in an IP address, it's nearly impossible that you're gonna remember all these IP addresses for different websites. It's a lot easier to go, you know, and I go to Facebook or Amazon or Twitter or whatever. As human beings, that's how our brains are wired. It's a lot easier for us to remember names than numbers. And this is where DNS comes in. DNS takes the host names that we can easily remember as human beings and automatically on the back end correspond to the appropriate IP address and display the resource that we're trying to access. As a best practice, configure redundant DNS servers for high availability or HA. Here are some of the most popular public DNS servers in the world. My personal favorite is Cloudflare. It's actually a pair of DNS servers. Primary is 1.1.1.1 and secondary is 1.0.0.1. They claim to be the fastest DNS servers on planet Earth. And I have found that to be true. Now, next up is Cisco OpenDNS. You have the addresses right in front of you. Uh, that's a company Cisco had acquired a couple of years ago called OpenDNS, and it's now become part of Cisco Umbrella. And the IP addresses that you're looking at are publicly available for anyone to use, and they provide security services on top of DNS with malware protection and all that. So it's pretty interesting if you're interested in security features instead of just a plain vanilla DNS service. And another very popular public DNS service that a lot of people use is Google public DNS servers, 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. They're also really fast, but I've noticed Cloudflare is in its own league altogether, just absolutely earth shatteringly fast. Now let's quickly discuss what is DNS and how it works. So we talked about what DNS is, now let's talk about how it works. So we have Bob and his PC has an IP address of 20.1.1.1 and there's a DNS server on the internet that has a public IP of 40.1.1.1. Now step one is Bob sends a DNS name resolution request. So let's say Bob opens up a browser and goes to www.cisco.com. That's what we call a DNS request. Now, next thing that happens is the source port on Bob's PC, it's also called a private port from a private range of ports is automatically allocated. Let's say in this case, 49.799. And the destination port, because DNS runs over port, UDP 53 is 53 because that's the destination. And the source IP in Bob's case is 20.1.1.1 and the destination IP of the DNS server is 40.1.1.1. Now, a couple of things I wanna to bring to your attention is, like I said, this at the top is considered a DNS request. The source port and the destination port combined this is your transport or layer four and the source IP and the destination IP combined. This is your layer three header and the information makes its way to the DNS server. The DNS server then responds back to the name resolution reply and it says the IP address of cisco.com is 80.1.1.1. The source port is its own port. The destination port is the previous port defined by Bob and the source IP is DNS server's own IP and the destination IP is Bob's IP, of course. And the final step in the process is, at that point, Bob now knows how to communicate 
with cisco.com web server at the bottom right of the screen, which happens to be at 80.1.1.1. And Bob starts talking directly to the web server, it no longer has to go and talk to the DNS server anymore because the DNS gave it what it really needed to be able to communicate with cisco.com. And then we have the source port. Once again, it's gonna be a randomly generated port. Destination port in this case is gonna be port 80, which is for HTTP. Bob is gonna form a TCP connection, a three-way handshake with the web server. And the source IP is gonna be Bob's IP, destination IP is gonna be Cisco.com's IP. By the way, this 80.1.1.1 is a fictitious IP. This is not the real Cisco.com IP used for the purpose of this example. Now let's zoom out a little bit and see what the DNS server did for us that we looked at on the previous slide. So here's Bob again. So the step one is Bob types in cisco.com in the browser. It goes to the internal DNS server, which for majority of the people, it's your ISP server, or it could be the public DNS server I talked about, like the Cloudflare or Cisco or Google. And that server will get your request. And once it gets that request, assuming it doesn't have an answer for it. If it does have that information in its cache, it will immediately respond back. By the way, taking a step back here, if your PC already knew how to get to cisco.com and there was a cache in the browser, the PC won't even bother going to the DNS server. It will just automatically take you there. But this process happens because we don't have an entry in our local database on our machine. So our machine then goes to the DNS server to see if it's, it's got that information. Now, assuming the public DNS that we're connecting to doesn't have that information either, then what ends up happening is it ends up going to a root level domain server. And it says, look, I got this request for cisco.com. Do you know where that is? Well, the root level domain server, there's only a few root level domain servers, by the way, around the globe. Some big universities actually maintain root level domain servers. There's a handful of them. Uh, the root level domain server says, well, I don't know the answer, but I do know the top level domain server who may know the answer to that. And the top level domain servers are .com, .org, .gov, .mil, .tv, etc. So because you're trying to get to cisco.com, it says that I'm gonna send you to the .com top level domain server. Now that server says, well, I don't know exactly where cisco.com is either, but I do know second level domain server that knows exactly where it's hosted. And at that point, the second level domain server redirects the request to the authoritative server, the actual server where cisco.com is hosted. And at that point, that server responds back directly to our public DNS server, and at that point, the public DNS server responds to us. By the way, this entire thing that we just looked at, which took me a couple of minutes to explain, this happens in a blink of an eye. It's super duper fast. By the way, this is also known as recursive DNS lookup. Recursive means the request is constantly redirected and it bounces around different hierarchy of servers until the traffic gets to the point where the actual DNS server responsible responds back to our public DNS server and we end up getting an answer for it. And that is DNS for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.